Nakilad is at the forefront of the LNG transportation industry with the world's largest fleet of LNG vessels. Our vessels are the largest and among the most technologically advanced LNG vessels in the world, delivering to more than 26 countries and 90 terminals worldwide. Nakula to provide the essential transportation link in the state of Qatar LNG supply chain. As a leading LNG provider, we aim to safely deliver clean energy to the world. Nakula's diverse business portfolio further allows Qatari to explore vast career opportunities at the shipyard, agency, or at the headquarters. The fleet is considered as a floating pipeline that links the producer and user of gas. We have to ensure that the fleet is operated in a safe, reliable and efficient manner in order to meet the customer satisfaction. Let us follow an LNG carrier on a typical voyage and discover what it is like to work on board these vessels. Joining a vessel involves an onboarding process that includes an extensive safety briefing and familiarization to ensure every crew member knows exactly what to do in the unlikely event of an emergency. We join our vessel at Ras Lafan port, where the loading of 260,000 cubic meters of LNG has just been concluded and the loading arms are being disconnected. Okay, so presently uh, the cargo which we are loading is going to China and usually if you are loading, loading all five tanks with uh, three loading arms then it's taking about 15 hours you know, from start of loading till completion. Before cargo operation we have to make sure that our tanks are cold enough to, so we can proceed. Prior to the unmooring, Tugboats rendezvous with the vessel to aid safe manoeuvring away from the jetty and out of the port. Safe navigation is assisted by the local pilot, who provides advice and support to the ship's captain as well as liaison with the port authority and the tugboats. Unmooring of such large vessels is a high-risk activity and requires careful planning to ensure all crew members stay safe. The mooring ropes are under high tension and therefore the crew are very well trained to handle the ropes and operate the machinery in a safe manner. Once safely out of the port, the officer of the watch is given instructions by the captain and normal watch keeping is established. The pilot departs and the vessel now sets course for China to deliver the LNG cargo to the customer. A new day begins on the voyage to China. During the next two weeks or so, the vessel will sail across two oceans and cover 5,200 nautical miles, which is almost 10,000 kilometers. Presently, we are on the navigating bridge, which is the eyes and the ears of every vessel. From this location, we are navigating the vessel 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Through advanced satellite technology on board the vessel, the master is able to communicate with the shore staff at Nakilat office to update on the status of the ship and progress of the journey. Representatives from all departments attend a daily meeting to prepare and plan for the next day activities. Uh, the team's wealth of knowledge and experience goes a long way in making the journey of smooth sailing one. The vessel's mighty engines will turn vessel propellers almost two million times before the vessel reaches its final destination. Each morning starts with a toolbox talk, where all safety and operational job aspects are discussed and tasks assigned to individuals based on the daily work plan. 
That is the engine control room where we control all our processes which is goes on in the all machineries and diesel generators and uh, cargo equipment. The engine that is the heart of the ship and it provides the ship with the energy and with uh, all resources which is required for the safe operation of the ship. The engine room is huge. Actually we have double engine and all equipment is double. Okay, so today we have done a live boat drill, which we are doing on a monthly basis, so all crew to be ready in case of emergency. They have to know what are they, what are they these uh, duties and where to proceed when they hear different alarms. This is very important for us, so that once we receive, uh, they hear the alarms, they can go pro proceed straight to their booster stations. While at open sea, one day each week is dedicated for checking life-saving and firefighting equipment in the morning. While the afternoon is spent socializing over a formal lunch and indulging in various leisure activities. Our seafarers stay fit and healthy by using the shipboard gym, which is equipped with all essential training equipment. Working out not only helps them to stay fit, but is also a great way for them to socialize in their time off. I'm Talal Ansari. I'm a third mate in this vessel. My main duties here is to navigate the vessel safely. On board the vessel, we are somewhere around 30 people on board. Uh, we, we are all here like a family. So yeah, uh, I'm a kind of person who likes adventure. I like to try new things. So I was thinking joining Nakilat will provide me the opportunity to sail and see all this uh, outside world, let's say. When at open sea, the navigating officers and watch keepers can handle all navigation tasks. However, the challenging navigation in the Singapore Strait requires bridge team manning to be increased. Parts of the sea are like a highway, where a lot of vessels are using the same routes to reach their destination. There are not many places in the world where this is truer than in the Straits of Singapore, where approximately 2,000 merchant ships traverse the waters on a daily basis. At its narrowest part, the Singapore Strait is only one kilometre wide. Careful navigation is an absolute must when passing through these waters to safeguard the people, the ship and cargo on board. Let him pass in front of us. While most days at sea are calm, one can never predict the weather. Sailing through stormy seas requires an experienced master to navigate the ship and crew safely. Deck officers and crew on the navigating bridge spend half their working day. This is four hours of night watch in more or less complete darkness. While everybody sleeps on board, these men make sure that the vessel is navigating safely throughout the night. Every night, the master provides a specific night order for the watchkeepers to follow. Day-to-day -day work on board is demanding. It is a big task to keep all the vessel systems running and in ship-shape condition. Meanwhile, in the ship's kitchen, the galley, the catering team is busy preparing over a hundred meals for the crew, and this is done on a daily basis. After a challenging day at work, the evenings are spent with colleagues and friends playing cards or video games, or chatting with family and loved ones at home via the internet available on board. During passage to China, the vessel passes through six different time zones. Clocks are advanced by one hour every three or four days, so that by the time the vessel arrives at its destination, the vessel time is synchronized with the time at destination. 
One of the greatest dangers a vessel can encounter is a gas leak or fire on board. The vessel is equipped with various fire prevention and firefighting systems, which primarily function to detect early signs and prevent a fire from spreading across the vessel. The IMO spray system is one such example seen here. The LNG industry adheres to some of the strictest and highest safety standards and has enjoyed an impeccable safety track record without a single incident of human or vessel casualty due to cargo fire on board. Drills are done in coordination with the head office to also ensure onshore staff are trained and ready to handle emergencies. When the team are not performing watchkeeping duties, the deck crew are kept busy with maintenance of deck structures and equipment. Needless to say, the seawater can cause corrosion of the deck steel fittings and equipment. So keeping all fabrics and structures corrosion free and all equipment freely moving is a constant battle. One of my weekly duties is to do an inspection of the crew accommodation and living spaces and uh, to check that living conditions are as they are supposed to be and that all uh, life-saving equipment inside their cabins is in good condition. Uh, this is required by Maritime Labour Convention. After two weeks at sea, the vessel safely reaches the discharge port in China. Once cargo measurement is done and all safety checks completed, her precious LNG cargo is discharged at the receiving terminal. Discharging is now safely completed. All checks of engine and bridge systems are completed. The port pilot who comes on board to assist the master with vessel departure has extensive knowledge of local waterways and the tugs are used to turn the vessel in confined spaces within the port and port approach channels. Tugboats assisting the departure process are connected and the vessel loosens the mooring lines connecting it to shore. Once the vessel leaves the port limit, the tugs disconnect from the vessel and the pilot disembarks from the vessel. Our vessel and the crew are now ready to enter the open seas and begin the two-week journey back to Ras Lafan. Each one of Nakalat's LNG vessels performs a similar journey on an average of 10 times a year, transporting clean energy across the world, creating an integral part of the global energy transportation supply chain. <laughs>